Mahomes back, throws, it is incomplete, yes. picked off, picked off by the Lions. Brian Branch with it left side. He's gone, baby. He's going to the house. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Deflected yes. in the air, Branch ran under it, and he took it all the way back. Welcome to the 20 Minute Huddle podcast presented by Microsoft. I am Tim Twentyman. This is PJ Clark. And PJ, for three and a half quarters, the Detroit Lions did not play their best football Sunday. But look, what good teams do is good teams find ways to win games late. And they find ways to make up for their own mistakes. Yep. And that is what the Detroit Lions did with their 31 26 win. Over Chicago Bears and come from behind fashion. I would I would love to see what the prob win probability chart it got up to ninety eight point like. two. Was it ninety eight point two on ESPN? What at what point there when it was uh, after? I think it was like twenty six fourteen. Yeah, three oh six left. Ninety eight point two right before the JMO touchdown. That's as high as it got. Well, that two percent was much much needed for the Detroit Lions. And look, give Jared Goff credit. Yep. Um, I mean, this was you know not his best game, admittedly. Uh, after the game, three interceptions. You know, I, I thought two of those a tip ball, and then your receiver getting hit before the ball gets there. I don't know. I mean, he took responsibility for them all after the game. I think maybe one of them was a really bad one where he just didn't see. Um, uh, Edwards just wrote right to him, um, but not his best game. But then, what does he do? You know, he comes back and, and um, drives the ball 75 yards and then 73 yards in the final two possessions, ending with touchdowns to win the game. And it doesn't really get much better than that. No, and it's exactly, you know, he came up big when when the team needed it. Not not his best effort. Not, I don't, outside of Alex Anzalone, honestly, I don't know if it was anybody's best effort on the Lions today. But that's what a good team has to do, especially a, a divisional game, a team that, that, you can't, you know, it's a tough home game to lose and go down early like that. And the crowd got, crowd stayed. There's a lot of people stayed. There and, a little bit late. But crowd was not behind you, certainly, no. in, in the third quarter. And and the third quarter has been a recurring theme so far for the Lions. and struggles in the third quarter. But they're fourth, still the only team in the NFL that has not scored on their first so, possession in the second it's half. It's so weird. A number five offense rushing and passing, and they have yet to even it's score so on their first possession in the second half. What's it, going on? It's so weird. But, <laughs> you know, whatever. You punted the third quarter today, and you still won the game. And that's that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. You find a way to win, and that's why I thought this quote by Jared was, was terrific after the game. Yeah, it's, it's a lot easier to play bad and win than it is to play bad and lose. And, um kind of what we did today we played not not our best ball and not my best ball for you know about three and a half quarters and found a way to make it work there at the end it's a sign of a good team we're a resilient group uh we're tough we uh <laughs> we, we have a lot of courage uh and and we're, we don't back down from anything you know and i think the defense deserves a lot of credit too for for the way they played now you look at the stat box you look at justin fields his first game back 104 rushing yards you know, 169 passing yards, had a touchdown, the, the, the beautiful throw to DJ Moore. But I think overall in the fourth quarter, just like we talk about with, with Goff and the offense, when they needed to stop, when they needed to step up, th look, this defense you know, did that. And, and I think it, 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 it's good for them coming off the game that they had um, last week in, in Los Angeles. Um, look, the, the, the third and one, or the first play of the fourth quarter, the, the tush push that, yep. that Chicago tried um, to, to make that stop right there at the 23 yard line, force a force field, the field goal. I think a touchdown there, a first down there, and then and potentially a touchdown. I don't know if Detroit comes back. And then, look, you score the Jameson Williams touchdown, and Dan Campbell said he walked over to his defense and, and he said, Look, this is what the kind of moment you guys should live for. This is your opportunity to help us win this game and and um you know so and then the defense gets off the field you know, in, in in you know the three and out and then obviously the play at the end there um with Aiden Hutchinson getting the strip sack and the safety to put kind of the icing on the cake I mean um kudos to this defense too for, for stepping up late and making their plays as well yeah I thought it was a, a well-played game by the linebackers especially we we hit on that going into the week that you got to keep fields in front and you, you can't let his legs be the one that, that beat you. And yeah, 104 yards is, is great, but 5.8 a carry is, you know, he can break bigger ones than he had, long of 29. 
Anzalone, as I mentioned off the top, 15 tackles, career high, fumble recovery was was all over the place today. Defensive line. First player, I think, since 2020 I saw. to, to First NFL player since 2020 to have at least 15 tackles and a fumble recovery. Great, we'll game. take it. And, <laughs> and, and Ali McNeil, another sack, and then Aiden at the end coming, coming up big when, you know, you need your your star guy to to do that and, and seal the seal the game and uh, a good punt by Aiden too on the uh, on the safety celebration. Who who knew he had that one in him? And it, one other guy I want to mention here too is is Jameson Williams. Yep. You know, a guy that we've talked about that's been talked about for for the last few weeks. To me, for Jared Goff to have the trust coming back the way they were needing two scores. To put that ball into Jameson Williams' hands, a 32-yarder, um, for the touchdown, the first of, of, of the comeback touchdowns there, I just think that that shows a lot of, of the trust level that, that Jameson Williams is not only building with his quarterback, but but with his teammates as well. And and I, I thought that was big, and this kind of, you know, what Dan Campbell had to say about kind of how Jameson's been building that trust. Well, I, I think a little bit like what we talked about last week, I mean, he's um, you know, he's part of the herd, you know, he's part of the herd. He's, uh, he's been accepted and, and the way he works and, uh, the way that man, he goes and he blocks and he's starting to run some pretty good routes and he's making some catches. And, uh, there's a lot of guys that are beginning to trust him, you know, and that's been earned no different than everybody else had to earn it, man. You, you gotta, whoever you are, offensive lineman, receiver back, man, you gotta earn your right. Um, and, Man, he's he's putting in the work. So that was good to see. It was a huge moment. That was a huge play, and uh, he just keeps getting better and better and better. He's part of the herd. I think Dan missed a marketing opportunity there, saying that he, he's part of the pride. Using just another Could've, animal term. Yes, yeah. it, it, no, it, there's fair. a marketing ploy. That's fair. There's an opportunity there. I think that was missed, but point taken. And, and I think you, you saw it with the block last week and, and what he's been doing in the run game and how – um, no block, no rock. He guy just, deserves a shot. He does, and he's just he's just been steady. He's been where he needs to be. Uh, Jared said he's practiced really, really well the last two weeks, and he's he trusts him. And 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 obviously, I think that showed today with going to him in that key moment in the final couple minutes to to have a big play to to help Detroit get this win. Obviously, this one was a lot bigger of consequence than the touchdown in Tampa. But I do think it's interesting that his his two touchdowns this year have been big shot plays which is what you draft him to be and what the 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 design is and the idea behind you know Amon Ra and Sam Laporte underneath and then J-Mo takes the top off so we're seeing that but also those are two huge touchdowns in the grand scheme of how those games went you needed another score to push ahead of Tampa when the offense wasn't really doing much you get a, a, a very good defense in that game and then you you had to just make up points and quick. And when you can hit a 32 yarder with, with a guy like that, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to do it. And I think it just, it changes this offense too. And I, and I think as soon as teams now see on tape, these plays, you mentioned the Tampa play, this play, they're just going to have to start to play them a little bit different. I think that's just going to continue to open up opportunities in the run game across the middle for guys like Laporta and, and, um, I'm on Ross St. Brown, and and I think it just it just changes this. It gives them that other dynamic that makes them just so much more dangerous than they were the first half of the year. Yeah, and I mean, you saw what what DJ Moore was able to do on the other side. Is is you took multiple opportunities down the field that were open for for the Bears, and they connected on the one, and that was a big touchdown for for Chicago. It just it gives you another dimension that defenses has to respect, and you know when you're playing, a, a, you know we need two touchdowns in four minutes like that today. It, if you have a guy that can go burn somebody sixty yards down the field, you're you can score in twelve seconds. Yeah, you're ahead of the game. How about the game, uh, David Montgomery? I feel so good for him. That was I mean, big. You know, that was great. You, you spend your first four years in in Chicago. You're you're a big part of that team. Um, you play behind an offensive line that wasn't very good your first four years and the team says eh, we'll move on you yep. know I think we can do maybe a little bit better there Detroit gets a, a great contract a good three-year deal um, and just the importance of him and what he's meant not only for their run game but for the development of Jameer Gibbs I mean you look at that final drive is a great example uh, Montgomery rushed 12 times for 76 yards in the game um, and but that last drive he accounted for 45 of the 73 yards both running and 
and catching the football cap by the one-yard touchdown, the go-ahead touchdown. I think he's just been everything and more that the Detroit Lions hoped he'd be when they signed him in free agency. Yeah, and I mean, when you have a, a guy like that that can rip off a chunk, it just makes running a two-minute drill that much easier. When you know you have an offensive line like the Lions have, but also a running back that, you know, okay, it's it's second and eight and we need a first down. We can run the ball even in a two-minute situation and you think that you can get nine and just keep the chains moving and you saw that twice on, on the two-minute drill and he, you know, I'm sure would have liked a little bit more than 76 yards and one touchdown could have could have definitely well when you turn the ball over four times you don't get you don't get a lot of opportunities you're playing, his from, fault. you're playing from behind but he got the one when he when he needed it most and i'm i'm sure that one felt great i can't his even emotion imagine. was he was he i was, was right down there in the end zone i mean you could hear him i'm sure you, you could hear him halfway up the stands oh i got it gotta, gotta Great shot of it. All right. I love it. Stay tuned for DetroitLions.com for PJ's terrific shot of the Montgomery celebration of his one-year touchdown. Um, but just to just – I, I think to have two guys now that are over 500 yards, they both have five touchdowns, talking about Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, the rookie. I mean, that is such a one-two punch, and I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that – we're talking about a, a football team here that has two 1,000-yard rushers on it. I think they're both very capable if they stay healthy. Yeah, and and you there was a lot of you know hemming and hawing about how the running back rotation was going to work out throughout the entire offseason. You paid David Montgomery a lot of money. You draft a running back in the first round. What's going to happen? What if they're both good? I, don't, I feel like, you know, oh, oh well, they're both, they're both really good. There are worse problems There to are have. so many worse problems to have. So let's just talk about this win, Peach, in the grand scheme of things. You know, obviously, one you didn't think you were going to have about three and a half quarters into the game. Uh, they find a way to do it. Like we talked about earlier, good teams do that. Now you've got a two-game lead in the NFC North ahead of uh, Minnesota Sunday night football game in Denver, right? Yep. And now I think looking big picture, too, you've got the second best record in all of the NFL behind the 8-1 and one Eagles, who don't have an easy one this week. And playing, don't have easy ones coming up either. Playing, playing Kansas City on Monday night. So just such a huge win to, to, to help kind of propel you forward into, into the conversation of the NFC North championship and then the bigger playoff picture in the NFC. I mean, at the least, you're keeping pace, right? If yeah. Philly wins, great. If Minnesota wins, great. Then nobody gained any any ground. Like at, at the very least, you are with your competition in this, and and you know you got to be careful not to to drop games at any point throughout the season when it's going to be a narrow margin to try to get a buy in the NFC or try to win a division against a, a team that is surging like Minnesota is. You just. You, Every game is important when there's only 17 of them, and and I think today was a great example of that. And now you got a quick turnaround with Thanksgiving, obviously the tradition here in Detroit, the Green Bay Packers coming into town. I thought they had a terrific win. At yeah, that home was that was the really Chargers. and and Aaron Jones was out before halftime for them, and then they made it happen. That was a really good comeback, and and they're feeling good. They're riding high 100%. coming in here. And so, look, this has been a tough stretch for Detroit. I mean, it really comes down to three football games in 11 days when you think about it, and, and that's tough. And, to be, and the first two were, were not easy. One though. being a West Coast trip and yeah. everything that goes along with that. So you're, You just took two haymakers in the first two games, and you're still standing. And you're 2-0, oh, but wasn't easy. So it's a quick turnaround. Um, they're going to have some walkthroughs this week. It's more about getting guys' bodies right, getting them healthy. Yeah. I think the good thing for Detroit, it didn't seem like a major injuries here. Avoided uh, again, knock on uh, wood. Craig Reynolds went down for a minute after he got popped on his fumble on the kickoff, but I think he was standing he on came the sideline ready to go yeah. back in and, and went in, so that's good. So I don't think there were any there was anything major. We'll obviously have to see the injury report on Monday, but um, I think that's a good sign as you, you just try to get these guys healthy and, and get them ready for Thursday. Yeah, and it's, a, it's another division matchup, which I – I feel like can't hurt. It's not like you're seeing an AFC team like maybe last year with Buffalo that you haven't seen before and, it, yeah. and you don't know what you're looking at. You already played these guys once. It's not like you're even playing Chicago or Minnesota for the first time this year. You have an idea of, of what's happening and, you know, it's it's it, division games are always going to be tough, especially in the NFC North, but it's it's uh, it, there are worse ways to enter a short week than, than winning two games back-to-back -back on, you know, 
borderline the final play of the game. And what Dan Campbell say this week, if you want to win your division, you better win the majority of your division games. Yeah, and so no, the Lions get really another important. one. They get two in four days, and they can go 3-0 and oh in the division, continue um, just – putting wins under their belt and, and, and hopefully, you know, putting themselves in a position to win the NFC North. When that comeback was in, in full swing, the final few minutes there, just the atmosphere here at Ford field was just such electric. And, and that's why I want a playoff game here so bad, yeah. because I think it would be one of the biggest home field advantages in the playoffs for Detroit to play here in front of this starved fan base for success. And and that's why this is a big win. You hope you get another one Thursday. Just continue that, and, and that's the number one goal. And I think the, the home fans, especially now, you know, you're, you're never out of it. If you can win a game like that with 98.2% the other way, you know, you just got, got, to, got to keep the faith. And I give credit to all the fans that, that stayed and were loud and were fired up when the defense came back out there on, on the Bears' last drive that ended up just being one play and and it was it was it was great it, it came in handy the home field advantage even even if some people people left you talked about how big last week's win was and it was because it showed that you could win a shootout that was maybe the yep. one thing that was and now missing from dan campbell's resume the first couple of years they had lost a lot of those games and now you show that you can you can win so can ugly win from comeback fashion, double digits yep. late um, with your offense and your defense. I just, that's what good football teams do. They, 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 they find ways to win in different ways. We've seen that all year with this Detroit Lions football team. And that's why Detroit fans, I think you, what you're seeing now is, is a really good football team. You should be really excited about that. Eight and two is the only thing that should matter. I mean, at, at the end of the day. First time since 1962. Yeah. Over sixty years, Peach. Yeah, I mean it's 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 incredible. I think the only one that's still here that that can say maybe they they where is Mike Ma- on this? Michael Harris? Where is, is Mike on this? The only one around here. Um, but it, it, look, it's been a long time. Dan Campbell joked after the game, um, but look, all their goals are still in line, and that's the important thing. Keep winning football games. Ian losing the ground. Everything is still in front of you. Everything is still in reach. You are in the pole position for half of it. Could be worse. It could be a lot worse. That's a fun thing. We will obviously be back here um, on Thursday. I think we'll maybe put together a 20 Minute Huddle podcast if yeah. we can we'll during a, the we'll, week. We'll, we'll have, have Tuesday. A, a, a I quick, have it slated for Tuesday. A quick uh, quick turnaround one. We'll try to get that in Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. We'll see. Fingers crossed. We'll, get, we'll, we'll do, try to get it to you as quick as we can. And we'll be back here in this spot on Thursday, hopefully talking about another win, hopefully talking about a 9-2 and two football team, and hopefully talking about a team with their third uh, straight NFC North win and in the driver's seat.